channel to update the latest information. We are QTN. Ukraine has initiated a significant transformation in its summer offensive, resulting in game-changing developments. Ukrainian forces successfully incapacitated critical bridges in Kherson and Crimea, disrupting the primary supply route for the Russian army from Krasnodar to Crimea. This tactical move was complemented by precision long-range missile strikes and drone attacks carried out by the Ukrainian Navy and Air Force on the Antonovsky and Kerch Chandhar bridges, opening the door for ground operations towards Kherson's verdant territory. Subsequently, the Crimean army quickly emulated these victories. A coalition of Ukrainian, American, German, and British heavy and light battle tanks joined forces to press the offensive, dealing decisive blows to the Russian army. The Ukrainian 47th Separate Mechanized Brigade, equipped with M2 Bradley tanks, successfully entered Robertine in southern Ukraine. Furthermore, U.S. supplied striker combat vehicles bolstered the Ukrainian ranks, marking a significant escalation of the conflict in Kiev's favor. As the Ukrainian defense forces intensified their assault, they also launched deep offensives to counter the Russian invaders on the front line. The Ukrainian air assault forces brought their most formidable units into play, with the 82nd Air Assault Brigade leading the charge. This 2,000-strong unit, equipped with Martyr and Striker combat vehicles and Challenger 2 tanks, has been actively engaged in operations around Robertine, within the Zaporizhia Oblast of southern Ukraine. Notably, the 82nd Brigade, along with its sister air assault unit, the 46th Brigade, were among the last sizable reserve forces held in readiness by the Ukrainian general staff. The Ukrainians made a crucial decision by deploying these formations into battle, significantly enhancing their firepower along one of the primary axes of the counteroffensive. This 50-mile axis stretches from the Russian-occupied Rabbi Tin to the occupied Malay, just north of the Black Sea coast. The striker combat vehicles are an integral part of Ukraine's formidable 82nd Air Assault Brigade, which received orders to join the ongoing counteroffensive in the southern operational region this week. Armed with top-of-the-line Western equipment, Ukraine's 82nd Air Assault Brigade is poised to make a substantial impact on the Russian army. The inclusion of Ukraine's 82nd Air Assault Brigade in the offensive has garnered considerable attention and generated intrigue. While Ukraine has divulged limited information about this unit, leaked documents and accounts from the battlefield have added to its mystique. The 82nd Brigade is rumored to have entered the fray near the village of Robertin in the southeastern part of the country, a hotspot of intense conflict where Ukraine is steadily gaining ground. This 2,000-strong unit was previously held in reserve, while most of Ukraine's other units have been making incremental advances. The 82nd Brigade's substantial arsenal of advanced Western equipment is being carefully distributed, given the relatively limited quantity available. Social media has even seen the emergence of footage showcasing a U.S. supplied striker combat vehicle in action in Ukraine. Although the video depicts a Russian Lancet munition targeting a striker, the extent of the damage remains uncertain, and the footage has yet to be independently verified. Nevertheless, these reports, along with other sources, underscore the evolving dynamics on the battlefield. Indications strongly suggest that strikers are currently in active operation within Ukraine, marking the first deployment of advanced U.S. armor in the ongoing struggle against Putin's invasion. It's worth recalling that, as per leaked U.S. intelligence documents, the 47th Brigade, the sole unit known to have received Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, was slated to receive a total of 99 of these vehicles prior to the commencement of the counteroffensive. In total, the United States has delivered 190 Bradleys, with over half of them going to operational units in Ukraine. According to Ukraine's Deputy Minister of Defense, Amelyar Ukrainian fighters are actively engaged in planned combat operations, effectively neutralizing the enemy threat. Furthermore, members of the 47th Brigade, stationed in the village of Rabbi Tin, have organized the safe evacuation of civilians utilizing Bradley infantry fighting vehicles. In light of the evolving situation, it appears that the 46th and 82nd Brigades are poised to intensify their counteroffensive efforts. The Russian forces are currently grappling with shortages in both personnel and weaponry, rendering them ill-equipped to fend off attacks in new areas along the front line. This strategic advantage allows the Ukrainian armed forces the freedom to select their preferred points of engagement, effectively forcing the Russians to deploy their exhausted forces. Concentrating their efforts along the Mokriyali River Valley, 50 miles to the east, 
the Ukrainian naval forces have played a pivotal role in this strategy. All four of their frontline brigades were deployed simultaneously across a 10 mile wide sector. This concentration of naval forces along the Mokryali River greatly benefited Kiev, as division sized naval forces successfully liberated a string of settlements along the Black Sea coast, advancing 50 miles south toward the occupied Mariupol. In a recent development, naval artillery, equipped with American made cluster bombs, inflicted heavy casualties on retreating Russian forces further altering the course of the conflict. Over the weekend, it became evident that the brigade's primary equipment inventory consists exclusively of supplies from allied countries. In stark contrast, other units within the Ukrainian military are far less well-equipped, primarily relying on Soviet-era machinery and equipment acquired through crowdfunding initiatives. On a different note, Jimmy Rushton, an independent security analyst based in Kiev, has corroborated the presence of striker armored personnel carriers, APCs, actively employed by Ukraine on the battlefield. It appears that Ukrainian military leaders have opted to lay all their cards on the table, revealing the full extent of their intended arsenal. Earlier leaked documents from this year have shed light on the formidable nature of the 82nd Brigade, which boasts approximately 150 armored infantry carriers supplied by NATO. Ukraine's impressive arsenal comprises 90 U.S.-supplied striker vehicles, 40 German-made martyrs, 24 USM-113 infantry carriers, and 14 British Challenger tanks. In addition to the deployment of strikers on the Ukrainian battlegrounds, there is strong speculation that the 71-ton Challenger tanks, each manned by a four-person crew and fortified with turret-mounted cages for protection against drone attacks, will also play an active role in the conflict. It is worth recalling that in January, the Pentagon had initially announced its intention to send 90 striker APCs to Ukraine as part of a $2.5 billion aid package for Kiev. The striker is a versatile armored vehicle, serving both as an infantry fighting vehicle and an armored personnel carrier. With 18 different variants of this combat vehicle and over 4,900 produced by General Dynamics over the past two decades, strikers are utilized for the transportation of infantry soldiers to and from the battlefield, armed with potent 30mm cannons for direct engagement. These vehicles are not only adept at providing fire support but can also be armed with weapons such as 120mm mortars. Weighing in at 20 tons and capable of reaching speeds of up to 60 miles per hour, these eight-wheeled vehicles possess the agility and power needed to swiftly operate as an integrated combat team. Against the backdrop of these developments, Ukraine's president made a series of notable statements regarding the advancements within the Ukrainian defense industry amidst the ongoing conflict with Russia. During an interview with Ukrainian journalist Natalia Mosachuk, President Vladimir Zelensky highlighted the Ukrainian defense industry's successful transition to producing equipment meeting NATO standards. He emphasized ongoing efforts to expand both production volume and capacity. Specific details were subsequently released by the presidential office. Zelensky disclosed that several programs had been initiated at the state-owned JSC Defense Industry of Ukraine. These initiatives encompassed various areas, including missile development. Furthermore, he underscored the notable uptick in production rates for certain domestic weapon systems, such as the Tuna and Corsair anti-tank systems, as well as the Neptune missile system. President Zelensky also drew attention to the production of Ukrainian artillery systems with a caliber of 155 mm, a standard caliber within NATO and relatively new for the Ukrainian army, which had historically utilized Soviet-era 122 mm and 152 mm guns. However, in response to Russia's full-scale occupation of Ukraine and support from international partners, Ukraine's armed forces have witnessed a significant transformation. The adoption of 155mm artillery has become commonplace, marking a shift in the Ukrainian Defense Forces' capabilities. To date, the 155mm caliber represents a notable development in the arsenal, reflecting the nation's commitment to modernizing its military capabilities. Ukraine's latest addition to its arsenal is the 2S-22 Bodana. President Zelensky emphasized that the nation has transitioned from producing individual systems to systematic production. While these resources are still insufficient to meet the frontline's demands, they represent a significant increase compared to the previous levels of production. Zelensky also announced plans for a military technology forum in October of this year, 
which is set to draw participation from leading defense industry companies worldwide. This event holds the potential for contract signings and promises to be a vanguard force capable of penetrating Russia's formidable defenses, thereby paving the way for regular troops to secure liberated territories. The Crimean Peninsula remains a focal point of the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Over the past two days, Ukrainians have executed remarkable raids, amphibious invasions, and missile strikes on the peninsula. The Neptune missiles made history by destroying the Russian S-400 air defense system in Sebastopol. Subsequent strikes on Crimea, including drone attacks, have further disrupted Russian defenses. Additionally, a substantial number of Russian bastion missiles were neutralized in the aftermath of these offensive actions. However, tensions escalated as the Ukrainian Navy initiated the first amphibious landing operation near Cape Tarkan, Crimea, during the midnight hours. In the course of this operation, Ukrainian sailors managed to disable four speedboats and eliminate 30 Russian soldiers. It was reported that Russian radar stations also sustained damage during the Ukrainian landing operation. Despite the persistent attacks, Ukraine remained resolute and declared its intent to continue targeting Crimea. The current situation clearly indicates that Kiev's preparations for an offensive remain in progress, both in southern Ukraine and Crimea. Of particular concern for Russia is the possibility that Ukraine might once again target the Kerch Bridge, which is presently undergoing repairs. Recall the previous Ukrainian assault on this bridge with S-200 missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles. Reports indicate that the bridge is currently closed to both military and civilian traffic. Nevertheless, Moscow is well aware that further damage to the bridge could destabilize Crimea. Consequently, Russia is vigorously defending Crimea's cities and the Kerch Bridge. In response to a series of audacious Ukrainian missile, drone, and naval attacks in the region that have already taken down large vessels, Russia's current strategies in this area appear somewhat futile. The main intelligence directorate of the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense recently disclosed that Russia deliberately sank its own ships in the Kerch Strait to create a barrier for defending the critical bridge against sea drone strikes. It has come to light that the Russians are planning to submerge at least six ferries in the strait to safeguard the Kerch Bridge, which connects the Russian mainland with Crimea. Ukrainian intelligence reports suggest that Russia has already destroyed the first ship and is actively working on sinking the second. This unfortunate action was undertaken to establish a defensive line on Russia's Crimean Peninsula by positioning boom barriers between the submerged vessels. Boom defenses, characterized by physical barriers or nets, encircle potential targets at sea, secure harbor entrances, or run parallel to anti-torpedo nets. These defensive measures, which have been in use since World War II, aim to deter drone attacks. However, drone technology developer Stefan Wright commented on the situation, indicating that Russia may not gain significant advantages from this new strategy, at least not in terms of preventing drone attacks. Wright argued that while These block ships can indeed offer some level of defense against certain types of attacks, such as the scenario where a large ship is commandeered and used to crash into a bridge or in encounters with manned submarines. However, they are less effective against smaller, highly maneuverable naval drones. While the Russians are striving to mitigate the threat posed by naval drones striking Crimea, it's worth noting that the Ukrainian army possesses a stockpile of Western missiles. Thus, it would be prudent for the Russians to take preemptive measures against these missiles as well. However, the Russian army currently faces limitations in its ability to undertake such defensive actions due to substantial losses in the realm of air defense systems. Since the onset of the conflict, the Russian army has lost approximately 20 S-300 and S-400 air defense systems. These systems were frequently deployed in Crimea and along the southern front lines of Ukraine. Additionally, the Russians have suffered significant losses in terms of radar stations and intelligence equipment in both Crimea and the southern fronts. Before the liberation of Crimea, Ukraine's strategy was primarily centered around achieving net gains. For this reason, Kiev is now striving to build even stronger foundations for its scenarios. By neutralizing Russian air defense systems, Ukrainian forces aim to hinder the Russians from mounting retaliatory actions against their attacks. In conjunction with these efforts, the Ukrainians are planning a ground invasion of Crimea, with the area along the border between Ukraine and Crimea serving as a pivotal hub for these operations.
This region plays a critical role in Kiev's designs for the Crimean offensive, and significant developments are underway in this regard. The Ukrainian soldiers have launched operations to secure control of these crucial border regions, with the Chonga Bridge being the most challenging target in this endeavor. The bridge sustained significant damage as a result of these operations. More importantly, it forced the Russians to rely on much longer alternate routes along the southern Ukrainian borders for their military logistics since the bridge was no longer available for shipping operations. The destruction of the Chonga Bridge shed light on the extent to which Russian logistics were disrupted by the presence of important settlements between Crimea and Ukraine. While it's difficult to pinpoint an exact date for Crimea to be declared free, the intensification of air, land, and sea blockades imposed by the Ukrainians on the Russians has begun to generate optimism in some European nations. Even though attacks on Crimea have escalated, Ukraine's Independence Day witnessed a display of solidarity from Turkey, one of the significant Black Sea nations. The famous Turkish bridge connecting Asia and Europe, the Fadi Sultan Mehmet Bridge, was illuminated in the colors of the Ukrainian flag, symbolizing Turkey's support for Ukraine's ultimate goal of liberating Crimea and other seized Ukrainian territories. Though the discussed developments in the video represent a crucial step toward Kiev's ultimate objective of reclaiming the Crimean Peninsula, it is evident that such support bolsters Ukraine's morale significantly. Among the factors influencing the eventual conquest of Crimea are developments in Donbass and the final 43 kilometers of the Ukrainian front lines. The Ukrainian army's ability to concentrate fully on Crimea hinges on its capacity to secure control of the eastern front lines and similar progress in southern Ukraine, which will provide clear surveillance of Crimea. Should the preparations proceed as planned, the only viable option for the Ukrainians in this scenario is to simultaneously invade and besiege Crimea. To achieve this, Ukraine must employ drone attacks to catch the Russian air defenses stationed in Crimea by surprise. This strategy holds significant promise, especially given Russia's current shortage of adequate air defense systems in Crimea. Kiev is likely to prioritize this approach. Inexpensive drones will play a pivotal role in Ukraine's upcoming actions. Ukrainian forces plan to deploy drones similar to the Mugan-5 for these operations. Following the drone operations, the Ukrainian military will also execute naval drone attacks targeting all Russian Navy ships in Crimea, particularly those near Sebastopol. This comprehensive approach will render Russia defenseless in the Black Sea, preventing Russian reprisals along the Ukrainian coastline. This marks the final phase of Ukraine's critical plan to liberate Crimea. Subsequent to these efforts, Ukrainian naval forces will launch an assault resembling the amphibious landing operation previously executed in Crimea. This attack will come as a surprise to the Russians, highlighting the significant damage inflicted by these earlier drone strikes. Russian air defense systems, which had initially expended their ammunition on the Ukrainian UAVs, will be ill-equipped to halt Kiev's naval troops. Naturally, this strategic move will also necessitate the support of the Ukrainian Air Force. If all the necessary conditions align, this approach could enable a rapid seizure of the peninsula. The ongoing Ukrainian counteroffensive in the Donetsk and southeastern Zaporizhia regions continues to gain momentum. Ukrainian soldiers are steadily advancing towards the Russian military lines, despite the Russians' efforts to fortify their defenses with trenches and mines. However, these Russian actions have proven insufficient to halt the progress of Ukrainian forces. The ultimate objective of Kiev's offensive actions remains.